Hey everyone, so this is a story about how boondocking went wrong. And we hope through the story to just kind of share with you some of the maybe mistakes we made or kind of what we learned along the way. The first thing that should have tipped us off is the day was going so perfect. Go get it, go get it. I got it. You get it. It says Alaska on there. And you just find all these rocks when you're outside, you keep an eye out and you find them and then you post it on their Facebook page and then you either keep it or you can rehide it. We're rehiding the rock. Right there. All right, he chose to hide it on this rock for the next kid to find. I think that was a good idea, East. Hey, my my bird cup. That was me. Your brother is? Yeah. Oh, where is your brother? In, in mom's belly. Oh, right there in mom's belly. All right. We had just spent like three or four days preparing for this trip, doing a major shopping trip, a lot of Google Earth to find boondocking locations, and we were out on the road. We were ready to go. We actually had time to meander through the Kenai Wildlife Refuge, taking East to all the stops, looking at every little scenic pullout. He was getting to ride his bike. He was getting to just run around. Everything was looking like it was going to be a perfect day. Can you, can you run with me? Can I run with you? Yeah. Yeah, let's Don't run. With the rock. Let's go. Go, 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 go. We're running. Oh man, that guy's fast. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Man! <laughs> and that might have been it. I might have said, perfect day. So how do I go about ruining a perfect day? Typically, it is not staying on May and East time schedule. I knew it was about past East bedtime and I just pushed us forward. I could have chose the boondocking site that was a half a mile off the highway. I could have went to a location we already knew. I chose this boondocking site because right here is a lake that we're going to be able to go and take the... But no, that is not how Drew does things. He always has to pursue things to perfection and usually makes them worse. So what do I do? Hop! He's back! Hop! There he goes! He's right there, East. He's, he's running. He doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> he's like playing with us. I choose to go down a road that I've never been to that's a gravel road into the middle of nowhere. Just because I saw it on Google Earth. And was it worth it? Yeah! The first 20 minutes we saw three bears in three different locations. Did May and East care? Oh yeah, they were half asleep. He's coming, he's crossing the road. Bear, East, a bear, you see him? He's right there. Look up here, East. He's crossing the road. He's crossing the road. So the second mistake we made we didn't bring our screen tent with us because we said, if there's mosquitoes, we're just gonna go hang out in the scamp all night. We don't need a screen tent. Oh. Scamps are fine. Bugs can't get inside them. They're sealed up like our teardrop. And that's when the first mosquito came out. The second mosquito came out. And we had this plan. Our plan was we were just gonna take out the mosquitoes and then sleep peacefully. But every time we took up one, we swear four more came to replace it. You're bad too. Oh, oh yeah, look at backside those. here too. Lots of them back look there. Look at those. Yeah, they're bad too. Uh oh, poor guy. Yeah. Do you have any on your feet? Nope. It was a mosquito infestation inside the scamp and it felt worse than outside. We had to get out of there. Where were these mosquitoes coming from? Do they come under the door? I know everybody out there who has a scamp probably has figured out how to stop these mosquitoes from coming in. 
Or maybe you don't have this issue. This is Alaska. We are known for swarms of mosquitoes. Yeah, you're seeing them all over me right now, but they're pretty mild in terms of what we've seen out here in our teardrop. So if there's something we need to be plugging up, is this a 1980s teardrop thing and the newer ones don't have that sort of thing? Has it kind of worked its way loose over the years? We have no idea, but if somebody does know, please help us, because honestly, last night we would have rather been in a tent. The day before, did we research anything on our next destination? Did we know anything about moving forward on the highway? Did we know there was construction for the next hour and a half? That would have been a good thing to do before we went out. So I tell May, we're just gonna take off. We're gonna go back up that dirt road, back out to the highway. That way we can just get into one of those pullouts and we can go right back to sleep. And I gotta tell you at this time, May is like, she turns into a pumpkin after midnight and she's angry. She's actually kind of tough after midnight. And I can see she's really grumpy in the passenger seat. She's having trouble falling asleep. We get out to the highway and right off the bat, construction. In Alaska, there are two seasons. There is winter and there is construction season. And we hit one construction outfit after another. And we were sitting there waiting for the pilot car and behind us there was nobody. And it was eerie, we're never out this late. It's never dark in Alaska in the summer and it's now dark. So that brings us to 2 a.m. in the morning. We have made it through the construction. We're at Soldatna and there are no choices left for boondocking. No, you guys, you didn't. You didn't go there. We did. We went to Fred Meyer's grocery store. We stayed practically at a Walmart for the first time staying in a parking lot. Sometimes you lose. Fred Meyer parking lot. This is where we stayed last night. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Good old. Fred Meyer parking lot. And it was tough. I'd like to say that it was a great experience, but it was loud. There were cleaners all night around, big semis coming through. But in the morning, we did get to get up and do some shopping and stock up for the next day. Mm -hmm. 